Hi, my name is Eleanor. It's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to my home. Get comfortable. Now, we're going to be having these sessions for the next six months, so I hope that we can be really good friends in that amount of time. Now, um, I've been a therapist for the past three years, and um, I like being independent and having my work ethic in my own home, which is why you're here today. Um, so I um, so it's also very beneficial for all my clients here. They seem to think that it's a lot more comfortable. So um, if there's anything that you do need, like a bathroom break or uh, any food or uh, any uh, drinks or anything like that, uh, you'll let me know, okay? Okay, good. Now, um, in this session, um, it's just going to be a little short session today, okay? I just want to get to know you a little bit, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do, and um, we're not going to really get into it just yet, uh, because we do have six months, okay? Okay, good. Now, I, um, I do have to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings, uh, so you haven't, you're not, you haven't taken any illegal drugs in the past 24 hours. And, um, can you please state your name, your full name, out loud? Okay, good. And, um, can you remember my name? Great. <clears throat> Correct. And can you tell me what date it is today, including the day? Right? Very well. Now, you're probably questioning why I've asked you those questions. Like I said, I need to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. Believe me, there's been a few clients here that have been under the influence of something, so I just had to make sure that you weren't. It's very hard to work with somebody who is. Um, to be honest, it's a, it's a complete waste of time. It goes through one ear and out the other, so not really much point when the next session you can't remember what's been said, so. <clears throat> really, you know, just interferes. Okay, so I believe that you have been through a traumatic event recently, okay? And you're here because you're dealing with a lot of anxiety, okay? Yeah, I'm very sorry about that too. Um, I hope that we can we can work together and really help you out the next six months. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Um, it's probably going to be very hard for you, but I'm here. <clears throat> and everything you do say is strictly confidential. You are in my own home, so um, there's not really anybody else to tell. <laughs> um, but um, unless you're, you know, you're threatening me or you threaten somebody else, that I think is going to be in danger, that is something that um, I will need to go further ahead with and actually tell somebody because that, that inflicts somebody else, but I'm sure that's not going to happen, is it? Right. Okay. So we are going to talk about anxiety and um, how we can sort of deal with it, okay? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So anxiety is something really hard to discuss, especially with somebody who has never really dealt with anxiety before, or something that's constant, um, which makes it really hard because those people think that you are hypochondriac, or you're making it all up and it's all in your head, or you're doing it for attention. And I mean, some people do that, but in reality, people who do suffer with anxiety are asking for help, but they can't get it, which makes it even worse, okay? Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple of pictures, somebody who deals with stress, 
but gets a little bit of anxiety but doesn't the matter gets resolved easily and then we're going to look at somebody who deals with stress in a different way that causes anxiety which becomes constant and it can also lead to depression too which is what we'll talk about soon so I'll just draw somebody This is representing somebody who is happy and they have no worries at all and they are content with their life. Now, they do deal with stress at some point. So if we write. <clears throat> so they deal with some stress here, but the matter gets resolved very easily. So We'll look at somebody who deals with stress not in a good way, which is what you are experiencing at the moment. So these people are very good at hiding their feelings. <clears throat> who is hiding their feelings and they're constantly having anxiety. So then they deal with stress. But the difference is with this person is that this stress here becomes somebody who has anxiety here. And that anxiety goes around like this. Anxiety is a vicious circle, and it doesn't stop easily. Somebody who is happy, and they deal with stress, but the matter gets resolved pretty easily, their anxiety level goes to about here, <clears throat> and then it stops, and then they go back to being happy. So, that's the big difference. But when this anxiety and this stress go on for a very long time, it can lead up to a thing called depression, which is awful to have because depression can lead to suicide. You, you don't deal with, you, you haven't had any bad thoughts about suicide or anything like that, have you? Okay, good. Is something that we would really have to look at and um, if you ever do feel like that or feel very down and feel like you do have depression you'll let me know okay because you need somebody to help you with that that's something that you can't fix yourself um, so when you do have depression it goes just like this <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'm going to put these up here, and just to let you know, the hands up here that you might be a little bit confused by, this represents togetherness. So when you're in my home and we're talking, we know exactly what's going on, we, we are together in it, we're not going to break that bond, I understand and I'm here to help you, okay? Okay, so put that here. Do you like a clear representation? A little bit different. This is somebody with a normal life. Let's take the apple for example. This little leaf here, this little stem, and this little leaf here is just a representation of a little bit of worry, okay? Now this one here represents somebody who deals with a lot of anxiety, and this is a vicious circle. So pretend this is the head. This here is the vicious circle. This is all your thoughts. This is something that you can't get rid of easily. 
And because it goes in a vicious circle, it's constantly building up and up and up. And we want to eliminate that eventually. So we we'll take this pot away and then just have this. And maybe that little stem leaf. But at the moment, this is what you're representing. Another way to show you is if we take these. Somebody with stress, happy, normal life, can get along doing things. This is a representation, this is a ball, this is representing them. This is their matter resolved, remember? Now this is somebody who deals with anxiety. Constant anxiety. So, somebody with a normal life. Somebody who deals with anxiety. Can you see the difference here? This one's a bit more tighter. It's locked in. Somebody with depression. Make this a little bit smaller. Depression anxiety can lead up to something like that, and it's extremely hard to get out of. So I'm going to put these back up here so that you can have a look at them. questions about anxiety, okay? When do you think that these, this, this sort of popped up, have you had it prior to the traumatic event that you went through? Okay. And how long do you think that those sort of happened? Okay. Okay, so you've dealt with panic attacks too. Okay. So, a person who deals with panic attacks um, is a completely different feeling. I've had a panic attack myself. It's definitely not nice at all. Um, so basically with a panic attack, your heart is you sort of getting a big adrenaline rush. It's called the flight or fight response. So your heart is thumping and you can hear it through your brain and your ears and it's, it's a horrible feeling. It's not something that you can really describe other than it feels like you're going to collapse or have a heart attack. The best way to deal with those is prior to those happening or when it does happen is not a lot of people can help a person because they don't want help because they're so scared that they just want to be left alone. So the best thing for you to do, if that's the way that you are, is that we're going to be doing some breathing techniques and I think these will really be beneficial and really help you out, okay? So, how many panic attacks do you think you've had? About two. Okay. Were those spread apart or five weeks apart. Okay, that's good. That's not like a constant thing, so I'm not really too worried about that at the moment. But what I want you to do at the moment is I want you to close your eyes. So comfortable, close your eyes. Okay. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose, so count to five, so one two, three, four, five, and breathe out, good, and we'll do that again, so breathe in, sit a little bit more straight up, one, two, three, four, five, breathe out, okay, Good. Now what I'm sensing as well is if you look at a baby and this is the best breathing technique to have, okay, so I want you to try it because I can see right now that you're not breathing properly, your breathing technique isn't very posturous. So when a baby breathes, when they breathe in through their nose, their stomach goes out, okay? 
And when they breathe out for their mouth, their stomach goes in. That is the best way to breathe, okay? And I want you to try that right now. So breathe in, but put your stomach out. So hold one, two, three, four, five. Breathe out through your mouth, but put your stomach in. Okay, and we'll do that again. So breathe in, stomach out. This makes the air flow a lot better. Three, four, five. Breathe out. Okay. And really listen to your breathing as well. That's another big thing too, especially when you're having a panic attack. This really helps your body calm down, okay? So let's do that one more time. So. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. Stomach in. Sitting up straight. Good. So I want you to try that every single night for about 10 minutes. And then it'll become a natural rhythm for you basically when um, you start really getting into it, okay? So that's a breathing technique. Now there's something a little different that I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> there is a thing called you've got the internet haven't you? you do okay. so there is a thing called the community on YouTube it is a thing called ASMR now this is extremely beneficial for those who um, are dealing with this sort of thing okay ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, okay? Scientifically, it hasn't been 100% proven, but the evidence is there, okay? So people use it for <clears throat> relaxation, calm down, and it also helps them sleep. <clears throat> Relaxation helps them calm down and helps sleep. So I think these two are the same, um, but they come in different forms. So with ASMR, if you've ever experienced so something like a scalp massage that you've ever had that felt really nice, um, that's a autonomous sensory meridian response. Um, somebody who has uh, giving you a massage on your back or tickled your back or you've had your hair washed at a hair salon and it just feels really nice ASMR creates this type of thing for you to enjoy and there are thousands of people that are in the community right now and I strongly recommend um, looking things up so a lot of things like I said is people do Scalp massages. Um, what else do they do? People can do role plays as well. So, some, a lot of people can get, um, feel really relaxed with people that gaze lights in their eyes. So, they could do like a doctor role play and they like the sound of gloves. Or they like, you know, other than role plays, is like soft speaking. Um, that people really like, or um, just somebody with a really nice, pleasant voice, and there's people from all over the world that do it, so there's different sort of accents too um, that you can mess around with. Um, I want you to go on ASMR and find something that relaxes you. And um, what I'd like to do now, though, is I would like to give you a scalp massage, if that's okay. Okay. So I, I can do that for you now, and you can let me know if that feels that sort of relaxing for you, okay? So I'm going to put that one up there right now, and I'll start with your scalp massage just for a couple of minutes, okay? And you can let me know how that feels. Okay. So, does that feel okay? It does? Okay, good. I'm just 
just for a couple of minutes. Relax, you can close your eyes if you want to. This is really, really relaxing. You're getting a tingle sensation. What sort of tingle sensation are you getting? Like your head's frozen. Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. Don't worry about that. I've been listening to ASMR for about four years now. Um, it really helps me, really helps me to relax, especially at night time. Yeah, it, it, I really can't recommend it enough. There's a lot of people. Um, I'll recommend some people for you as well the next time, but I want you to research this for yourself. Still feel good? Yeah, I, I do really want to help you. I mean, anxiety, it, it, it can change your body a lot. Um, you're eating properly, aren't you? Okay, good. Just make sure that you're drinking a lot of, plenty of water. You're not drinking too much caffeine. Um, it, it can really change. Um, especially, you know, like the women and men, especially in women, like their hormones can change. Um, we can talk about that next time if you wanted to. don't have to. This is just a really nice massage that you're getting. Just a simple one. You can do this yourself. It feels better when somebody else is doing it. And you also understood everything that I mentioned. Great. That's really good. Hmm. Already making process. Uh, progress, sorry. Okay, let's do this for a couple more seconds. down. How did that, how did that feel? Felt good? That's really good. That's really good. It's fantastic. So what I would like you to do as we conclude everything now <clears throat> is I want you to do your breathing techniques and be aware of your breathing and please do the breathing in, stomach out, breathing out, stomach in, okay? Because that's really going to help you and I really want you to Focus on ASMR and see if that helps you, okay? Okay, great. Well, it was really lovely to meet you. Um, <clears throat> I can't wait till our next session. Yeah, I, I do really want to help you. You seem like a very nice person, so I'm more than happy to do anything. And you can call me at any time. You can do, yes. If there's anything that worries you, you already have my number, so um, give me a contact on that. And um, I'll, I'll guide you through it, okay? But uh, next week, we'll go into a little bit more detail and um, we'll see what really what really helps. And um, just to let you know, with the ASMR, you do need some pretty good headphones that I'd recommend. Um, if you can get surround system sound, that would be great, like a 7.1 stereo. Um, that would be even better, okay? Make sure that you do eat as much as possible, okay? Not bad foods, you know, good foods, vegetables, fruits. Drink a lot of water, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Well, it's really lovely to meet you. Pleasure. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.